Brett, thank you for joining us in our podcast, Rewinding. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, sorry it took me a little bit to get back to you. I've just been busy and I mi- I didn't see your email when it first came. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, do you preparing <laughs> yourself for upcoming tour in Europe in summer? We waiting for you, especially in Novi Sad Exit Festival. Yeah, Sofia. it's been we've wanted to come to the Nova Sad especially for a long time. So it was interesting because when the band first started, um we used to before email, before anything websites, um we would always get mail um from the post office delivered um and we had the addresses in our um CDs um for people to write to and we would get a lot of of mail from Nova Sad Yeah. in particular from the early days so it was it was some, a place that we always wanted to play but it just never really worked out schedule wise or festivals or whatever so we're pretty excited to uh to have the chance to do it yeah but you're coming pretty close uh in hungary yes 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 we have been many many times yeah but yeah just for whatever reason it just you know there's a lot of places that we still want to go to that we haven't yet even in europe and we've played guy we've played so many countries in europe but there's it's such a big continent and it's there's so many places right. to play you know yeah yeah but before we start talking about the new album uh will there be a massive tour as an album promotion I mean, we, so last year, the record came out in March, almost a year ago, and we went to Europe. God, did we go three or four times? I think we went three times to Europe. Mm -hmm. We did the big tour with Pennywise and No Effects, and then we came back in the summer. We did a bunch of big festivals, played, you know, amazing stuff, Metallica yeah. at Hellfest. And, and then in the fall, we went to um, Europe with uh, Hardcore Band Berthold City, and we did like a club show run, so... It's been cool because we did a bunch of festivals, we did a bunch of club shows, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, n- new album still is is still fresh. Uh, is self titled. Why is that? Does it feel like a new beginning or with new singer? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that was kind of the idea. We we had two or three album names that we uh, were talking about, but when we kind of got together with the record label you know they had the idea as well we we had the idea too but we, we just didn't really bring it up but uh the uh the record label was thought that having a self-titled would be a good idea and we agreed so yeah new start fresh beginning like just uh the new chapter of ignite so yeah and how was the feeling with uh ellie how he came to band into the band Well, he was actually friends with our drummer. Our drummer Craig has known knew him for a long time. Um because he was playing in a bunch of me- different metal bands, you know, Holy Grail and uh, a bunch of other stuff. And uh Craig actually when he contacted Eli, he uh didn't know he was really a singer and he just asked him uh if he knew of anybody um that would potentially be interested in playing in Ignite and Eli said, "Well, let me get let me take a a shot at this let me try and craig said okay yeah cool and when he recorded some music for uh or some vocals for us uh it was cool we were like oh man this is great we got to try this guy we got to get in a room with this guy and see how it feels and then once we did that once we got in a room and just the personalities clicked and uh, mm-hmm. the atmosphere was perfect it was pretty easy choice at that point yeah uh you put your album out on century media uh which is pretty much a big label Uh, yeah. What do you think about music industry today, social networks and punk rock role in all that? Ah, you know, it's changed so much. It changed so much since we started this band in 93. I mean, the first time when we started, it was just like recording a demo tape and putting it out at the local record store mm-hmm. and trying to spread the message, the, the band, just locally through, you know, physical uh, tapes and... uh You know, we've watched this thing for the last 30 years almost now. Um, we've watched this thing grow, the industry change, evolve. Um, you know, everything's streaming now. The most the most physical products that you sell is vinyl. Mm. You don't really sell too many CDs anymore. Right. Um, so it everything's changed. The whole landscape of the of the music. And I think it's great because you can reach so many more people now. Um mm. 
we went to Indonesia for the first time in 2014 and we played a big festival with Lamb of God mm -hmm. and thousands of people were singing the words to our songs back to us. And uh, I, at that point I was just like, the, the streaming of music is amazing because we've reached so many people in a uh, territory that I don't think we would have had that many people know the music, yeah. you know, everybody's whole music, um, <laughs> their whole discography is on their telephones now. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's strange, you know? Yeah. And when you mention it, beside punk rock and hardcore fans, uh, the metal head loves you, you especially, <laughs> uh, especially those bands like Lamb of God, Machine Head, that are yeah. really great. And that mean you can play on metal festivals as well. Well, that's the thing. We've we've played so many metal festivals over the years that, you know, I think we've had uh, a lot of exposure to those fans and to those bands. So, um, yeah, and heavy music is similar, you know, punk, hardcore metal. It all comes from the same kind of like tree. So, you know, there's a lot of crossover. Most guys that are into hardcore, uh, at least from my experience, are big metal fans, you know. So yeah. there's a lot of crossover for sure. Yeah, and uh, when we're speaking about early days, Orange County has a legacy of great hardcore and punk bands. Uh, yeah. Tell me about your music roots and local scene back then. Well, I mean, my personal music roots, you know, started with my parents. My dad had a big uh, vinyl collection listening to Beatles and Stones mm -hmm. and uh zeppelin and the doors and you know paul mccartney solo stuff so i had exposure pretty early on to rock rock music and um you know my path went through more i wasn't so much into hardcore and punk when i was in high school as i liked you know like british gothic kind mm -hmm. of bands joy division bauhaus chameleon stuff like that that was where i was really listening to stuff i was really into the pistols and to the ramones uh when i was a teenager and um and then that just kind of evolved into more hardcore bands learning about minor threat mm -hmm. but then my biggest exposure was when i got you know started ignite with our guitar player joe foster he lived and breathed you know a lot of washington dc hardcore orange mm -hmm. county like uh, he he uh, he opened my eyes to a lot of hardcore so um that that's kind of my personal path to hardcore was uh, yeah. starting in uh, starting with rock, starting with Beatles, starting with the Stones. And what about Orange County and a uh, local scene? Well, I mean, it's been going on forever. You know, yeah. so many amazing bands coming out of Orange County. I mean, there's the list is huge. Adolescence, you know, the Offspring yeah. are one of the biggest punk rock bands of all time. They've been doing it forever. DI, um, you know, no doubt is from Orange County. They're so like the scene was very widespread. Uh, is it social punk. distortion also? Social distortion, yeah. probably the you know the most famous Orange County punk rock band in in my in my eyes. Um, Inside Out, which had Zach De La Roca, yeah. you know, went on to do Rage Against the Machine, of course. So yeah, there's the scene in Orange County is massive, and I think it's one of the the biggest music scenes like for independent heavy hard music like anywhere yeah that, that's really that's really interesting and when we're speaking about music and rock and roll in general do you think that uh those kinds of music has its edge like activism politics do you think that uh music and rock and roll in general could uh change public opinion yeah i mean definitely you're <sighs> When we get on stage, sometimes there's 200 people, sometimes there's 20,000 people. It just depends. You know, it's different every day. But you always have an opportunity to make an impact in front of people. Now, if you don't want to deliver a political yeah. message, because some, some bands, that's just not what they do. But I always think it's make a positive, you mm -hmm. know, be, be a positive example to people. And I, I don't know. That's just where we come from. Some people yeah. dwell on negativity and stuff, but that's just not we're a band that likes to always put a positive message out there but there's no formula there's no requirement there's no you know bands who have worked hard to get where they at can can deliver whatever you know message they want to and they have they have the right to do so yeah and the media role is enormous today 
yeah in sending those messages uh, i want to ask you about uh, war in ukraine we have cold war again climate change yeah. also take its turn in europe recently we had a uh, giant earthquake in turkey and syria gun violence yeah. is growing every year every year one of the things is coming to my mind is your song how is this progress how you comment uh, today's world well there's a lot of really bad things going on i think in general i i like i'm an optimistic person i like to believe that the world is constantly getting better that we're com- becoming better people um that we're taking care of more people um but there's there's a lot of really messed up things going on right now i mean the war in ukraine is just for me is just i don't understand why that is happening you yeah. know you have this old mentality old dictator that wants to relive the 60s and 70s i think he wants to see this happen again before he dies and you have this he's just an insane brutal terrible person mm. that's causing so much grief and pain for a whole country it's senseless it's just it's pointless i mean i, I can't wait for the day that he's removed but i think once sadly that he's removed somebody maybe worse or the same will take his place so i don't know it's tough man it's tough yeah. it's just it's 2023 and we are still invading other countries and killing other people is just it's completely pointless it's sad and it's it's yeah it's a, it's a very it's very sad to me right like we're standing in one place for decades yeah and it's getting worse and worse <laughs> yeah i i just it's it's just it's really sad because in 2019 uh we went to ukraine um mm-hmm. we had like six days between festivals <clears throat> we flew to ukraine some of the guys in ignite and we spent five days there just on holiday in in kiev mm-hmm. and um it's a beautiful place nice people great food fun going out at night uh amazing architecture around the city it's just it's just so sad that that's the place is getting destroyed right now and so many people are getting killed yeah. and displaced and displaced is the is the one of the biggest yeah things. yeah a lot of refugees in all the europe so uh for the end uh, i gotta ask you what's the future for ignite do you have maybe songs for a new album or you going to tour constantly this year it's going to be a mix this year. So last year we started touring in May through November. We did a couple shows in December. We did like 100 120 shows last year. So we were pretty busy traveling uh everywhere we did Canada, uh, America, Europe and um this year's going to be a mix of some touring mm-hmm. and uh working on new material for the next record. Yeah. So yeah, it, we don't want to wait five years. We want to um put a new record out as soon as we can. And, um, and that's the interesting thing too, with the music industry is, um, to be visible, to take advantage of all this, like online marketing. It seems like you need to be constantly putting out new music yeah. to stay, to kind of stay, uh, relevant. And, uh, I've noticed since the last, uh, song and video came out for ignite. And then we were, touring those next months um that uh now it's it's it feels like e- everything is very slow for us because there's no new music so we're excited to get back into the uh, rehearsal studio well, we actually already started we have a bunch of songs yeah. for the new record that we're already working on so um it's just fine-tuning those and getting you know the goal is to try and record this winter yeah and so. also i forgot to ask you i ask every musician uh, uh how is your tour life today when you get a little bit older is it way different than when you're uh, 10 20 years who, younger? Who, who's getting older Me? <laughs> yeah no it's um we still really enjoy i mean being able to get on stage and play music in front of people that love your band is a gift and it's something that we really love to do. We hold it, we hold it dear to us and we 
you know, we, we know we're very lucky. Not a lot of people in the world um, get the opportunity to play music in front of people that really love their band. So it's, it's, yeah, we just love doing that. So that's usually like at the forefront of our, of our, of, of where we're at with music that takes precedence over anything. Yeah. Traveling and touring and playing shows every day can, can be tiring, but just the, the ability to play in front of people and see the reaction and the look on their face and the smiles and the energy people have. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. Great. So see you, Brett and Ignite in Novi Sad. Thank you very much for speaking for our podcast again and see you on stage. Yeah, we are very excited to come play the Exit Festival. We all have always heard for so many years how amazing it is. So hopefully yeah. hopefully it'll be as, as good as we think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a fun day. So Yeah, and the lineup is really great. Totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Thank you and cheers. See you in Novi Sad. All right. Thanks, buddy. Bye. Have a great day. Thank Bye. you. Yeah.